Hello, this project is on motorizing the Bugatti. So actually I tried many times, but it never worked because whenever I put the motor on some area, the, the, motor, the gears made a creaking noise because it was four wheel drive. But then after I dismantled almost the whole back with the pistons, I took out a gear over here, like something like the same as this gear, but I took it out from here. And then um, uh, it just became a two wheel drive. After that, I attached this large motor with a three axle from the pistons with this gear from here. And that connects to this main gray gear, which powers these two wheels. But, and this way, the, it's not four wheel drive, so the motor has to apply a little power. Here's a demonstration. As you can see, it's very simple for the motor. Even though the Bugatti Chiron is very heavy, it still works. Now I just finished the motor assembly. As you can see, um, everything is the same. It's just I put the motor inside. So to put the motor to the battery box all the way in the middle of the seat, you have to use this motor wire. It goes all the way through here under the spoiler. And then you connect it to extension cable here, like right in front of the suspension. Um, after that, what I've done, the, sus the extension cable, I kind of like... Put it at the low part of the piston so that it doesn't get stuck. This is the extension cable. I just tucked it down there. And then I brought it out over here. And that area connects to the seat. Which, and, I bring, and I brought it right here. This is um, how uh, you can set the motor with the extension cable to bring it to the front. Motorizing the Bugatti, the pieces I had to buy was um, a L motor, the large motor, IR receiver, a battery box, and an extension cable, and for the IR receiver, the remote. These, these things are just made out of the extra pieces. You don't really need to care about that. Also, very one important uh, point about this. As you can see, this like bumper thing is sticking out because the mo if you put it more in, it's going to tweak the motor. So two things. This is the first one. The bumper, instead of being all three spaces there, it has to be one space back so that the motor can fit. The next thing is the spoiler because you can see that you use a, you used a special like dog bone technique piece to connect the spoiler into that area, like right over here. But then, um, since the spoiler goes there and I took that place of the motor, I took out the dog bone piece and the, and the, and the things connecting to it, like the parts which connect to the spoiler. So I just left the L piece. I left, just left one piece connecting to the spoiler. And then I and then I connected the spoiler with the axles, a two axle over here, and uh, no axle over here so that the key can fit. One surprising thing is that you'll find that the spoiler will still work even though the motor is taking that place. I'm going to make it run. So first, I put the IR receiver to cut this like seat bag over here, and the, the part where you sit on over here for the battery box. I connected the IR receiver on that, put the battery box here, and I just tucked in the wires on the side. It's very simple to turn on, just like that. And now I'm going to give you a demonstration of this in action. Since the motor is connected on, the extension cable uh, is connected on the red part of IR receiver, you push the red forward, for forward and backward for backward. As you can see, it's turning because right now I haven't put the servo motor, so it's still um, hand automated. Uh, in my next video, or next part of my video, I'll be showing how to put the servo motor in.
This specific project was just making the back wheels run. And the pieces needed for just the back wheels running are the IR remote for making the car go forward and backward, battery box, IR receiver for the remote, and the battery box for the IR receiver to connect, an extension cable for the motor so that the wire can connect all the way to the IR receiver, and of course, the L motor or large motor itself. So now I'm going to talk about how I put the servo motor. <clears throat> First, we have to take out the hood and this rim thing, and this bumper thing, this piece, for like the front and you also have to remove this piece along with these pieces this will give you full uh, entrance to the back to the front where the servo motor is going to be kept right here so if you need the servo motor of course I had to remove a piece over here, which was connected to a one flathead four axle, a flathead gray, dark gray four axle. So I had to take that out and instead put a five axle, which is which has no flathead, and then I stuck it in there. That I connected that to the gear, and um, I connected the servo motor in that gear, and then I used these two extra pieces from the Bugatti itself. And I connected them here because inside they actually connected that thing, which will steady the servo motor. But also one very important point <clears throat> is to, you see these gray things, these gray long beams? You'll have to shift them by two for that to fit. Because when you fit over here, when you actually first build the Bugatti, there's like two, one hole here empty even with no gray beam, but you have to shift it by one so that this bottom part of the servo motor will fit inside. Now I have assembled the Bugatti back. There's actually the trunk over here, the front. It's sticking out a bit because of the servo motor, but that's no problem because um, the servo motor is a quite big motor because it only turns 90 degrees, so that's no problem. I put the battery over here and actually, for the motor over here, the L motor over there, I used the 20-inch extension cable. And for the servo motor here, to get all the way over here, I used the 8-inch extension cable. It's right behind this wheel. That is the connecting point right there. And I connected that to the IR receiver because I took both those like seats things out. I put the IR receiver backwards on one and the battery box settled on one. So, and I tucked just the wires in the back over there. Now the way it works, you use some extra pieces with the remote. The blue one over here, it's supposed to go on, you see this red thing? This goes on the red one over here, cause red for red. It goes here, and this piece, you need a half axle, half clip with it to go here, like that. And both the IR receiver and remote have to be on channel four for both of them to work. And to turn it, you just turn on the battery hub, and then red means forward. I mean, uh, so now I'll show you how it runs. So first, as I explained in the earlier video, turn on the battery box. Red means go, blue means turn. Because the servo and motor are connected on that. Now I'll show you how it works. So this is a Bugatti. For those who want a deeper depth for more, more speed, you can buy a Buriz motor, same L motor as in my previous video. 
and servo motor you can move by a few inches and flip it down that's not an easy task but those who are building the front they can just take out the seven beam and replace it with the three one like for the bottom part and then they can just put the gears into the servo this is the normal mode don't, put, don't mind that cracking that this is servo when we're going at a high speed. So fast. And then the fastest, the beakers. Now I have assembled everything all back together. In my previous part of the video, everything was all opening and the buoys. I'll explain the later part of my video of the servo and the buoys. And um, in the next part, I'm gonna show you how it all runs. And I'll just get the app. So set up, click the button on the buoys and found it. And then starting the engine. And then if you just see this wheel here, it actually goes fast. So I'm going to do normal mode first. This is normal mode. Steering is same. Everything works. And then fast mode. And then the ludicrous, which is probably the best mode for this. You go really, really fast. And then the pistons actually also work too. Uh, they're actually a little fast for you to see. Just gonna put on normal. Slowing down the speed. And then on the decrease, they go really fast. And with the driving too, they actually work too. And now I'm going to show you how it works on the real floor. Now uh, I'm going to show you how it goes on the floor. I am going to start on neutral and normal mode. Pretty slow. Then after that there's fast mode. Better news is that it can climb like you know bigger obstacles now. And then the best, ridiculous mode. Uh, and after this, I'm gonna show you how the pistons work. As you can see, it goes really fast, much faster than you expect, actually. And now I'm gonna show the pistons. And the gear. And. This is on the beaker's mode, by the way. Um, a few things I improvised was the servo motor. I I moved that like before. It was like like the bottom of it was towards the up, and the in the engine was going up to like here the trunk. And then I flipped that down, but and I did that by like so first there was a yellow piece here which I had to remove, and then there was a seven beam there, but. I only used four beams because one is sticking out. And that is the three beam. You see that yellow axle there? This is the three beam, which is supposed to be for the seven beam. I replaced it with a three beam so that the bottom can stay still. And then the gear under this gear, which the servo motor is steering, is also like it's connected to the servo motor because it needs to be steadied. Then the next improvement I made is that I got a buoys. And the good thing about the boo is, is that it can fit like right under the like storage space of the passenger seat. And since it's smaller than the battery. And then um, it also gives a lot of power to the motor, like the driving motor. Like it, so it, it gives like in ludicrous mode, it can make it go really fast. And the, in the motor, it connects to port three over here. And then the servo, which I explained earlier, connects on port one. And then if you just give it a little push, it's going to squeeze right under there. There is one small improvement. I wait for the driving motor. Place is the same, but the cable, the extension cable, 
I just realized the 8 inch is enough just to connect to the booze as I explained earlier. And the servo motor, it wire, it's wires long enough to go all the way over here since the booze is small it goes there. The servo motor connects all the way there and nothing is bent. And the 8 inch extension cable actually fits nice and snug. Uh, one sec. And if you see here, that is the wire there. And if I just do that, so this wire goes here. And I just connected it to where it connects to the extension cable. That joint is right there, if you can see it. Right there, right next to that piston. And then that connects over here into that hole next to the seats and then it just connects to the buoys. I did connect that gear back to this transmission here. And I replaced that black gear, which connects to the L motor with a three axle. Also for the pistons, I just did this with those. I did like that, then I connected onto this like that. There is that they are a little separate, but they do these two beams connect onto the L motor there. They don't look that bad, but they do look they do now work. Now I'm going to explain how the lights go in this Bugatti. So the first is the back. The back is pretty straightforward. There are just those blue pieces there with lights for the spoiler. Then there is Two orange lights go in that thing for the Chiron. And then there's a long beam in this for the letting the light up. And then those gray pieces, these gray pieces for the uh, these things, they are just replaced with different gray pieces and those have lights in them. That's the back. And then now let's move to the front. Front are these lights. These come, but you do have to take a light. These are how the lights came only with the wires. You did have to take this this black piece here, two by one plate, and this piece which connects to that uh, this uh, front grill here, and then you needed to connect those to put this on, and then same here, just same thing. And this is a flip down though, and then the interior, the last light, is just this six beam, which is stuck under this gray C thing. Now I assemble all the pieces for the lights, mostly just these two pieces. And now I'm going to show you how they look in the dark. In the daylight, they're not that bright, but in the dark, which I will show in a few seconds, they look really good.